friends, um, welcome to Be Waste Wise and uh, another, uh, this is the fourth webinar uh, in partnership with ISWA. Uh, and uh, my name is Ranjit Annipu. I'm a senior waste management specialist uh, where I've helped various organizations reduce wastes and achieve compliance and also help launch uh, various international initiatives to improve recycling and waste management. I'm also a co-founder of Be Waste Wise, where we've helped organizations like ISWA through webinars like this and um, Asian Development Bank, MWH Global, and others achieve capacity building and knowledge dissemination goals. Uh, we are also partnering with uh, the World Bank to launch the new version of their famous and extremely useful Water Waste Report in September. Um, uh, so if your organization um, is looking for knowledge, uh, an avenue for knowledge dissemination, um, please get, us, get in touch with us. You can write to us at uh, connect at wastewise.be. And uh, we're also looking for uh, local and regional partners now um, for knowledge dissemination globally. Um, before uh, we get into the uh, today's webinar, let me uh, mention that our annual program called the Global Dialogue on Waste will be starting on September 4th and um, will, will be from September 4th to September 5th. And the themes for this year are New Systems for North America, where we'll be talking about new social and technological solutions that are coming, um, that are happening right now for North America. And then the second theme is learning across the Atlantic, um, where we believe both the US and Europe are uh, facing similar uh, problems when it comes to waste management, but the solutions, the technological and social solutions that uh, they are charting on are very divergent. And I think there is a lot of learning um, that can happen between these two continents. So um, that's the second day, uh, learning across the Atlantic. So please visit our website and you can sign up for these two events. And um, next week on Wednesday, August 29th, we have another webinar with us well, um, with uh, the DNOSIS project. And the DNOSIS project is a citizen science-based project where, uh, uh, where DNOSIS is working with communities around the world to um, map order and nuisance issues um, so that with that better knowledge, the communities can uh, engage better with other stakeholders. Um, they are looking for community partners um, around the world. So please join us August 29th, Wednesday. You can also sign up for this webinar on Be Waste Wise. Um, now, uh, so um, today we're doing some magic. So instead of Philip Halen, we have Tom, um, uh, Tom de Brocair joining us. He's the um, advisor. Um, he's an advisor to Philip Halen, and he's also the uh, he's also the chair of the working group on communications at ESWA. Um, so, um, Tom, welcome to Be Waste Wise. Um, it's it, we've known each other for a long time, but it, it took all these years for you to be on Be Waste Wise. Correct. Thank you for uh, inviting us for this webinar and giving us the opportunity to. Uh, to tell the people some more about this uh, brand new initiative of uh, of ISWA. So uh, thanks for having us. No problem. So uh, friends, um, Philip Palin will be joining us um, in a few minutes. Um, until then, um, Tom will uh, take us through the um, IMM, um, uh, what IMM is, and um, he'll introduce us to the idea, and then we'll um, ask more questions uh, once Philip's, Philip's uh, on the screen. Tom, so could you tell us a little bit about um, the initiative? Um, what was the starting point? Why did you, you know, start something like this? Yeah. The whole idea behind this uh, project or behind the initiative is the fact that um, we realized, or, or some politicians within within ISWA, uh, politicians like Philip Halen and, and Doron Sapir, who is the vice mayor of Tel Aviv, uh, those two guys, um, they're both politicians and they are both uh, became uh, passionate about waste, and they realized actually that a lot of their colleagues uh, who are also politicians on municipal level are not so passionate about waste and that the awareness for waste management and sustainable waste management uh, within a lot of municipalities and a lot of cities is still very limited. And so they wanted to share their passion. Mm. Uh, they both were familiar with, with ISWA and, and recognized that ISWA was a, a marvelous organization who brings together a lot of people from different companies a lot of people from different universities and, and organizations, but they had the, the idea and the feeling that there was still some, uh, yeah, the, 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 the politicians were lacking. And, and so they said, okay, let's take an initiative 
or, or take some effort in order to, to bring politicians on the municipal level uh, together with an ISWA and to uh, make sure that all the information and all the knowledge and all the experience that we have gathered within ISWA that we disclose this also for uh, local politicians and, and, and make them a little bit more enthusiastic about uh, waste management mm -hmm. and make sure that they get the right tools and the right information uh, for them to, to, to use in their local uh, policy making and their lo local decision making. That's mm -hmm. the idea behind it. And then, yeah, ISWA, the board of ISWA was uh, was uh, enthusiastic about this project as well. And, and they asked Philip and, uh, and Doron to, to formalize it and to come up with a proposal. And so we, uh, we now officially launched the uh, initiative for mayors and municipalities uh, a few weeks ago in Singapore at uh, a clean tech event which took place there. And in one sentence now we can say, okay, this was initiative for mayors and municipalities is a platform um, with the objective to uh, dissem disseminate uh, the know-how and all the best practices in, in uh, waste to uh, decision makers all over the world. That's mm -hmm. the one sentence, the objective of the IMN. Right. And um, friends, um, as you might know, you know, um, more than 50% of the world's population today lives in cities. And um, that kind of makes cities a great lever to be able to create global change. And um, in all these cities, I think the local politicians, the mayors, um, they play, I think, the most important role in deciding the future of these cities. And I think um, that's why I've been really excited about um, the Initiative for Municipalities and Mayors uh, by ISWA. And um, like, like Tom said, ISWA is truly, I think, uh, one of the only organizations, one of the only global organizations with, um, you know, participation from all around the world. So uh, that's great. So, um, Tom, could you um, tell us uh, a little bit about what kind of politicians you're uh, focusing on? Um, so is it just the mayors um, of each of these cities or are you also looking at others? Actually, the, the initiative is open for all politicians because if you look at, at, at on global scale in some countries, waste management policy is, is defined at national level. Mm -hmm. uh, in other countries, it's, it's, it's the regions or the cities or the municipalities who are the leading actors. And, and so there, there's no one size fits all. So we, we say, okay, the effort that we do in order to, to make all this information available in, in, a, in a language and in a wording that fits these, uh, these politicians. Um, we want to make it available for, for, for policy makers on, on all levels. We have called it indeed the initiative for mayors and municipalities because as you say, uh, cities and, 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 and municipalities play a more and more important role and, and more and more people live in, in, in cities and that, that will only increase in the coming decades. So we focus on them. But that does not mean that uh, also uh, politicians on, on, on a regional or national level or other organization are, are not welcome. We welcome everybody. Right, right. Um, all right, let me just do some housekeeping. Friends, so um, we'll have, um, uh, I'll be asking questions for about um, 30 minutes and then uh, we'll open it for questions from um, the audience. So if you have any questions, use the live chat below um, the screen to uh, send us those questions. Meanwhile, please introduce yourselves and uh, please um, feel free to have a good chat with um, the other participants. Um, and um, Tom, so uh, the idea of IMM, you know, is to engage politicians. So um, it, it, politicians and also more city-based um, leaders. So is this um, a change in how ISWA operates? Um, I mean, until recently ISWA has been uh, working more on networking um, globally and working on disseminating knowledge, but there hasn't been much um, focus on the cities uh, per se, which have been very important. So is this a uh, change in how ISWA operates? Change, uh, yes and no. The thing is that I, th I think that with ISWA, they made a click that uh, these politicians and local politicians is an important uh, target group uh, for ISWA in order to get the message across, because ISWA's mission is to promote and develop sustainable waste management worldwide to, to everybody, 
uh, everybody who plays a role, every stakeholder within 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 uh, waste uh, that could play a role within waste management, and so politicians are certainly an important stakeholder in in, in this. And and I think that it's well realized that uh, yeah, maybe they have neglected to 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 target or to reach out to politicians in in, in the past, and that's why they now say, okay, yeah, we. Uh, welcome this initiative uh, wholeheartedly and, and and with a lot of enthusiasm and they, and they support this initiative uh, yeah uh, very strongly and that's also why uh, in, in in all future ISWA events like the the, the the world congress in a few weeks at the end of october there will be the ISWA world congress in in, in kuala lumpur um, in the plenary opening session there will be some time for uh, announcing or, or to tell the, the, the participants more about this, this initiative. And there will also be a separate session dedicated uh, to politicians and mayors and, and municipal officers uh, within the program. So ISWA is making uh, space and time within their existing program now for this, uh, this specific target group indeed. Right, right. And um, what kind of response are you getting um, to this initiative at this point? I, yeah, as said, we we launched it or for the first time officially announced it a few weeks ago, beginning of July. It was in in, in Singapore, where we had the opportunity uh, offered by the, uh, the the National Environment Agency of Singapore. They offered us the opportunity to to announce it at the uh, what they call the Clean uh, Environment Leaders Summit. We had uh, the the very nice opportunity of of having the floor there uh, in a room with 400 uh, politicians, decision makers uh, from, from all the kinds of levels uh, where we could uh, yeah, announce this, this initiative. And, and we must say that all the reactions and the response that we got until now was, is, is, is really overwhelming. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm for the initiative and this, uh, that only supports us in, in, in our feeling that this is indeed something that, that a lot of people were waiting for. Right. And um, when it comes to your strategy for targeting municipalities and um, politicians, um, well, there are two different things, you know, um, about the types of politicians that you're targeting, but also the regions from which the politicians come from. So uh, when it comes to the regions from where they come from, um, what's the strategy? Are you thinking certain regions first, or are you going more with the events and the opportunities that you get to to be able to you know target yeah. them what's your strategy we will do this in a kind of uh, yeah pragmatic pragmatic way and and a no-nonsense way and indeed an opportunistic way because it's not our objective to organize uh, standalone events or new events but we want to include them in in the framework of existing conferences and 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 congresses that that iswa and maybe other organizations are are uh, already setting up uh, as said, we started in Singapore, where we had the existing framework of the, the Clean Environment uh, Summit. Uh, we will uh, do it again at the World Congress of ISWA in a few weeks in, in Kuala Lumpur. And, and so we will look out uh, for four or five uh, major events throughout the year, where we can um, yeah, include our IMM topic in, in the existing program. The advantage is indeed that that this is a, a budget-friendly way to do it, mm -hmm. and it it guarantees us uh, most of the time already of a very good uh, audience that it's already there. Right, right, right. Um, is is Philip here? Meanwhile, yeah, Philip just uh, arrived, so I will uh, I will make place and I will uh, I will let him uh, continue the story. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. <laughs> Good morning or good afternoon, Ranjit. Uh, hi, Philip. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Sorry that I'm late, but uh, traffic, like everywhere in every city, really made a problem. And we are a port city, and there was a major traffic accident, and all the bridges were open, and so that's why it took me so long. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, friends, um, you know, you've been waiting for uh, Philip, so Philip Kalen is here. Um, he is. Uh, he serves as a chairman of the board of directors of uh, ISWA, which is an intermunicipal waste management organization in, uh, organization in Antwerp. Uh, he is currently business development manager at Ackermans and One Heron, um, and he's also the honorary vice mayor of the city of Antwerp. Um, um, 
Philip and uh, Doron Sapir. Doron Sapir uh, is the first deputy mayor of Tel Aviv, um, Israel, and also a ISPA board member. Both of them together have started the um, initiative for municipalities and uh, mayors and municipalities with ISPA. So, um, Philip, we already had um, a chance with Tom to uh, learn a little bit about um, uh, what IMM is and what the strategy is for, you know, how you're going to target um, the politicians and what kind of politicians you're looking, um, trying to target. But um, do you have any in introducing remarks? Or do you want to add anything else to that? Well, I think you gave a good introduction. Let me say that um, in the last 18 years, I have become a strong advocate of sustainable waste management. And I have seen it from the public point of view, that means from local authorities, and how we can improve through legislation and to all no system, uh, how can we make sure that we treat our materials in the right way. That is the whole idea, that's the experience that I've had. On the other side, this is not rocket science. A good sustainable waste policy needs certain things that have to be prepared and a follow up and continue certain things. But at the end, once you have a good plan, it is possible to achieve a certain goal. What I have seen in many, many cases is that sometimes technology is available, but not policy or not, uh, let's say, a framework. Sometimes technology is not available, but is money, means are available. And sometimes people just start from scratch. Whatever situation you find yourself in, don't always try to reinvent hot water. And so what I have seen is that in those 18 years, although with a strong, how should I say, techno technological improvement, which we have in this part of Europe and in this part of the world, I have seen that I have learned from others. What we want to do with this initiative is combine both. We want to share our information as much as possible as local authorities or formal leaders of local authorities with other colleagues who want to go forward with sustainable waste management, but don't really know how to do it. And on the other side, we would like to connect between the public and the private sector itself, because it's never a one fits all story. It has to be tailor made. And I have seen and met so many people throughout the planet, to be honest, that I think that if we meet on certain moments, let's take the opportunity of share very tailor-made that experience and by doing so i think we can even improve and go to a more circular economy go to a more sustainable waste management landscape and things like that that's the idea behind it and i have found within iswa and i have found with my colleague in tel aviv and other places other colleagues around the world i think the right people to bring that knowledge to certain places where people meet and where we might improve certain things Right, great. Um, friends, I just want to uh, remind you that uh, we'll be taking questions in about seven to eight minutes. Um, so get ready with them, um, or, um, or you can already start um, typing them in the chat box below. Um, and I just wanted to add to uh, what Philip said, um, waste management uh, is literally not rocket science. I mean, some aspects of waste management and you know, thermal conversion can get as complicated as rocket science, but um, overall, um, I believe, um, you know, it's not something like uh, certain types of cancer or certain types um, or, or HIV where humans haven't invented a solution. I mean, um, and uh, but it still um, continues to impact public health around the world and quality of life around the world. So um, I, I think it's extremely important uh, for us to understand how the important role that technologies play, but also that kind of is based on the uh, uh, strong basis of uh, networking and uh, community-based uh, uh, solutions. So, um, uh, Philip, I have a tricky question for you. So now um, you're, you're focusing on um, local decision makers, and this is a problem that I've observed around the um, developing world, is in, um, you know, in most democracies, the uh, the decision makers change every few years, sometimes three years, sometimes four years or five years. Um, so, but when it comes to waste management infrastructure or waste management solutions, these are generally 10, 15, 20 or 40 year long solutions. So um, how do you deal with that um, attrition 
in you know your target audience first of all democracy is very very useful the only thing which you have in a democracy is elections yeah. I know many of my colleagues don't always like it but as long as you don't have anything better I go for the democracy of course yeah. but if politicians come and go their administrations are there they don't move mm. but I've been to um, on mission for UNEP to Lebanon to Beirut to solve the or to try to bring on the table solutions for the sustainable waste management policy in in Lebanon, one of the things was that the politicians changed the whole time, but the people behind the scenes, those who were really responsible for the whole matter, they were staying in place, they were staying in office. So it is not that if somebody goes, then the idea is off the table. Sometimes you just need local decision makers to bring something on the table and then continue from it. And once again, as you say, we're not dealing with uh, cancer research, we are dealing with facts that give me an analysis of what waste we're talking about, give me an idea of the framework in which we are dealing, is there already legislation, is there somehow separations of streams of materials and things like that, and then three, what is the first step to move forward, what kind of technology can be implemented. What is the territory we have or don't have? Which other resources are available or not available? Once you have put all these things on the table, you move forward. And my statement is that if you want to achieve something, you can have quick wins and quick results, sustainable quick results, within a framework of 24 sometimes to 30 months. Then already you achieve something. So for most of local authorities and for most of local politicians, this means that in their term, they can prove and come up with solutions, with steps forward. That's what we would like to give them to them. So it's not because people come and go that it definitely means that you have to restart again. No, you can continue and the administrations, which has to do the work, they stay in office. Philip, could you also talk to us a little bit about um, what's your strategy for um, dealing with the administrations as well as the political leaders? So when you're targeting them, um, are you um, targeting both of them together? Is that uh, how, how do they take part in this, and where are you going to be next? Let me say honestly, we I came with the idea for many years. Singapore is a very good example. In Singapore, they organize every two years the uh, uh, World City Summit, the Clean Environment Sustainable Summit, the Singapore Water Week. What I've learned in all these years that I've been attending to these uh, conferences is that they also have a kind of a regulators round table. The regulators round table is two and a half days that they invite people, sit together and they share problems and solutions and challenges and opportunities together. Mm. Who, is present? Who is present? Sometimes it's leaders, ministers, mayors, vice mayors. But most of the times, they're always accompanied by um, chief staff members, people of the administrations, director generals, or others who are in office. So what we would like to do is, we would like to use the opportunities when people meet. There are so many conferences every year, and talking about all kinds of specific elements. Why not make it structural and say, if you go to an ISWA conference, if you go to a CEWEB conference, CEWEB conference in, in Europe, if you go to the international uh, um, summits in, in Singapore, you always find also within the program the opportunity of asking, finding, connecting people that might help you with your solution. That is the whole idea. When the minister of Vietnam comes over to me and asks my support to say, how can we start in certain cities like Haiphong in the Northeast? How can we start sustainable waste management policies? Well, instead of making appointments and going back and forth, we meet two, three times a year on certain conferences. Let's share the information at the time. If I'm not there, somebody else is there. Connect with ISWA and ISWA will provide you with that information. It's not a, a new organization of something we're doing. We just want to provide an extra service from within ISWA, which mm -hmm. creates and really says why ISWA is so important, because the only organization where all that information comes together, private companies are members there, uh, uh, countries and local authorities are members, and all the information, it's like a library. Mm -hmm. When 
me, we bring the library to you with all the information and research which is already done. And then you just plug in and look what might be necessary available for you. That's the whole idea. Right, right. And I think that's um, extremely important. And people are, are like walking libraries. So, you know, when you meet them, there, there's a lot of information, a lot of knowledge and solutions that come out. Um, let me ask you um, another question. So uh, we're talking about tailor-made um, solutions for each of these um, communities. So who works on these tailor-mades? How, how are the other people, um, how, how do they engage with these politicians and leaders? Um, First of all, a couple of years ago at the uh, ISWAS World Congress in Antwerp, which I had the honor to preside in 2015, UNEP uh, and the World Bank and ISWA came up with a report. And that really was a kind of a first time document. I always refer to it as a uh, waste management policy for dummies. Um, it was the Global Waste Outlook Report. This report gave an idea if you want to go for a sustainable waste policy, what do you need on the level of legislation, financial, technological uh, measurement, all these elements which you need to, to, to start it up, to continue and, and to focus. Um, in the meanwhile, that has been developed with a separate report focusing on Asia. We are looking at other reports for other areas in the world. So the information is there. The only thing is, how can we bring that information to the right people? So if we have a beacon conference of ISWA in, in, uh, in Africa, and we will meet leaders there, we say, listen, we are, we are um, confronted with this or that problem. Uh, can you help us? Give, can you give you a solution? If we're in India uh, and, and we're faced with, with problems, sometimes people can come up and say, okay, we, we seem to have a problem. Is it a question of creating awareness? Is it a technological question? Do you know somebody that can help me? Who has this technology? Which companies we should look at? I mean, that's the whole idea. We would like to listen and find out what is the problem in this region, in that country, in that mega city, or in that district, and perhaps we can immediately connect them with the right people. I think it's a kind of a service provider, but then with a strong focus on waste, um, uh, on waste uh, policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, we have a question from Rodrigo Atilano from Mexico. Um, um, the question is, is this initiative open and available to any kind of city from small communities to big metropolitan areas? Um, that's a question. I think that's I, the most important thing is you have an organization which is ISWA. It's how I got involved with it from Antwerp, a small city in, in Belgium, being connected with ISWA. I found out that even with 32% of, of with uh, sorry, 72% of all materials being recycled, I could still learn new things from and through ISWA. So I got connected with ISWA and that's where I create the platform. Every local authorities, small city or big city, can connect with ISWA, ask the questions, and we can try to find solutions for your problem. And we can probably always connect you with people who are closer to your home than just the people in this or that part of the world. So yes, it is free and everybody can connect uh, to the initiative through the platform or through the organization of ISWA. Right, right. And um, so what are, the, what are the events that you're going to be next? Where, are, where will you be present in the next few months or years? Yeah, because Reggie, it's, it's a good question, the events. We are not going to organize new events. We're not going to overload people with new things. The only thing which we would like to do and take ISWA as the starting point is we would like to connect with other international organizations and make sure that if European, international, South American, African, Southeast Asian platforms takes place where people are thinking and talking and negotiating about sustainable waste policy, we'll also be there and we'll probably find also possibilities to connect. So we'll be present in the next months at um, the um, ISWA World Conference in uh, Kuala Lumpur, mm -hmm. take place at the end of October. We were in the summer in uh, uh, Singapore where we launched it. Um, I will be present a couple, in a couple of weeks um, also at the CEWEP, uh, which is on the European level um, in Spain, in Bilbao. And I will also like to connect on the European level, make exactly the same new connection. So that means that if we meet somewhere, I would like to have this Singaporean regulators roundtable idea 
to be implemented also at this moment. So people know I go to a conference, not to listen in a passive way, but also in an active way. Mm. I know my questions. I would like to meet the right people. And I know that I get answers to my personal questions or challenges, which I face. And in that way, the, uh, the platform is open to everybody from leaders, from small uh, villages, communities to um, mega cities. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, friends, um, I realize that uh, some of you are having trouble watching the session. Um, the others are able to watch it uh, without any problems. Um, and um, from the community, we hear that if you watch it on mobile, it's much easier. But again, um, we've never had this problem. So I'm um, sorry about that. Um, but um, so, uh, Philip, um, do you have any um, final thoughts? I mean, um, final thoughts about um, this this initiative and um, uh, maybe a welcome message to everyone here? What I, what I think is so important, and this is one of the reasons why I said I want to support this when I was in office and now when I work in a private company, Ackermans and Van Haar, and where also resources are, are high on the agenda. What I would like to see done is that all the knowledge that I gathered in the past 15, 20 years and the new experiences which I see today, I would like to share it with others. And if many of us are moving in the same direction, then we make indeed that difference. For me, the most important issue after the COP21 conference in Paris was that waste management was immediately linked to climate change. So if we can improve and move step by step towards sustainable waste management policies, we're not only doing something which will benefit us in the direct momentum in which we live, but we will also add to improve the climate. And that's why I think we, we should see and find solutions. And sometimes the solutions might be somewhere where you do not expect it. And if we have enough people together, that means enough libraries brought together, we might find exactly there the, the, the solution. Right. And um, what's the future vision like? Um, how, do, how will IMM look in three years, let's say? Um, when um, so you're you're going to many different um, events and engaging people there, but not, um, in, it will not only be me. There will be others as well. It's not a personal initiative. It's an initiative from Israel. So it's me. It's others. The idea is that between now and a couple of years, people know that if they have a problem, if they need a solution, if they look for partners, you contact through the IMM and Israel and we will try to bring them together. And then, of course, you have to do it yourself, but it already helps a lot. If you are looking for the first time for ways to energy, how do you start with it? What is this technology? How much will it cost me? How long is it going to take before we have anything started? How will neighbors uh, react to it? Is it really as, as dirty and bad as some say, or is it really as good? for those countries who have been developing it for the last 30 years. What yeah. about landfill? And I can continue. That's the whole idea. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's a huge technology landscape out there, depending on each um, community's um, requirements. So um, it's um, sometimes it gets really daunting for someone who hasn't had enough time to learn about waste management to come in and then make decisions on that. And uh, this is something that um, B Waste Wise has been working on for a while, which is um, all the knowledge out there is available in a long 200 page uh, PDFs um, or at only certain international conferences. And both of these are not accessible for decision makers who generally, um, I don't think a, a city manager would uh, read through my 200 page report to take a decision. Uh, you know, it has to be much more engaging. It has to be much more um, easily um, attainable knowledge. So I think um, uh, IMM, I think it's a great opportunity uh, where you also get to meet people. So that kind of uh, interaction also in improves um, the kind of work that you can do together. Exactly. That's, that's the whole idea. And the more information we share, the better thoughts come out. I mean, if, if I'm investing 175 million for a new waste to energy plant in the next years, I can find out all kinds of new technologies, which probably are all good. But at the end, you have to take the decision. So what you do is we went and listened to our colleagues in Copenhagen and in Scandinavia. We went to look in, in Germany and spoke with many people. And then you start looking and feeling. And at the end, 
by talking and meeting them and, and trying to put yourself in their place and, and invite them to come to you, you gather all that information and then you take a decision. It's a long experience, but it's a lot of knowledge that we gathered. We want to share it with others. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you will take your decision to say, in my case, for my suit, I want to have these fabrics, I want to have these colors, and that's what I want to wear. Mm -hmm. But we will at least give you all the options, put as many options on the table. And that is a service you don't find just in reports, and you won't need to go to, to specific conferences. No, if a conference is somewhere where you are, willing to go or already paid for to go that's where we want to be present so i hope in three years time that iswa will have a broader platform and that we will have more partnerships with world bank with unep with others really to make sure that um, there is always something directly for you involved if you go and meet their other colleagues right um, amazing so um, what you said about uh, that reminds me um, of a meditation book i was reading recently where um, the author says, imagine you're standing at the foothills of Himalayas and you pick one of the uh, peaks to um, ascend, then I'm the Sherpa who will help you um, understand how to get prepared for that um, ascent or you know, tell you, you know, which are the good spots to stand at or, um, or give you all the preparation that's required and actually guide you through to, to that point. I think that's the kind of role that ISWA wants to play in this overall um, uh, change um, globally. So um, thank you very much for that, um, Philip. And um, if you have any final thoughts, um, we can go with that. Otherwise, we can end the webinar here. And um, I'm, I'm really sorry for um, uh, the people who are unable to watch um, uh, the webinar live. Um, we've never encountered this problem. Uh, this is the first time. So um, if you have any questions that we couldn't answer, that you couldn't ask today, uh, please feel free to um, send them, uh, send an email to connect at wastewise.be and uh, we will get them answered uh, directly from Philip. Um, so, uh, and, uh, and uh, we just have one question from my very good friend, Luca Arsova. Um, she is a senior environmental engineer at um, ERG. Um, and uh, she's asking, um, how can private companies get involved in the initiative? For example, solid waste management consulting companies. Well, let me say that we need them, of course, because um, all the information is not information invented by politicians. It's politicians who, on a certain moment, had to make a choice, a choice between what private company, companies have uh, came up with. So the idea of the platform is we listen to questions and we connect them with others. We are never going to say take this company or that company. That's not our role. But we can at least say, listen, uh, there is this company, there is that technology, you should go and meet that and that people because we think that that list of companies or consultants even might be the perfect match for you. And that will be different in Africa, Southeast Asian, North Europe, South Europe. That's the whole idea. So yes, if you're a private company, if you are in, uh, involved in, in sustainable waste management and that is your thing, also connect to ISWA, uh, see what we are doing, connect with us and we will bring you in contact and make the ISWA family even bigger and larger in the weeks, months and years to come. Right, right. So they do have an opportunity to uh, interact with these decision makers directly through ISWA. Absolutely. All right, that's good to know. Um, I, and I think that's extremely important to, to be done too. Uh, we have another question from uh, Margaret Dara Oshodi um, uh, from Nigeria. She is asking, uh, is there a guide on how the initiative can be introduced within each country? Um, are you doing it through your national ISWA national members or um, how, are you, how are you going about it? Let me say, uh, I'm sharing these thoughts with, with you and, and, and uh, all the friends who are following us now, uh, but we just launched the idea and got uh, the approval of the ISWA board a couple of months ago. We are now going for the first time to the first World Conference of ISWA in Kuala Lumpur in a couple of uh, weeks uh, next month. So yes, I hope that we can improve and, and, and enlarge this initiative. Um, we will have to organize ourselves for that as well. Um, so give us, a, on that point, a couple of, of, of weeks and months to get more mature. But in the meanwhile, it would help, of course, if many people connect and come and mail and, and, and try to catch up with ISWA already so that we can organize and try to find what is the best way to organize to the questions or the initiatives that we would like to support. 
All right, all right, sounds good. And um, so with that, um, thank you so much, Philip, for your time, uh, you. and also Tom for for his time. Um, and uh, um, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, B Wastewise would be very um, uh, happy to help you throughout this initiative uh, with any kind of knowledge dissemination that's required. Um, and um, so with that, uh, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And um, again, I'm sorry that some of you couldn't um, watch and ask questions. Um, uh, but Susanna is asking, um, uh, will it be a digital platform? And um, let me just say that it'll not be a digital uh, digital platform. It'll be mostly uh, networking with peers at each one of the conferences that they want to that they want to be at. So um, with that, uh, thank you guys again, and um, have a good day, good evening, uh, or good morning. And um, with that, yeah, see you next week uh, on Wednesday for the Dnosis webinar. And Dnosis is looking for community partners around the world. So please um, join us next Wednesday there. And uh, on September 4th and 5th, we have uh, the Global Dialogue on Waste, where the two themes for the days are, one, um, new systems for North America, and, and number two, the second theme is learning across the Atlantic. And um, we already have a lot of registrations coming in for both events, so please um, register for both Dnosis and the two days of uh, the 2018 Global Dialogue on Waste. Um, yeah, with that, see you guys. Bye. Bye.